G'day. Hello there. I'm Ozzy Robbo. I'm English Jen. And welcome to our new series where we're not only flying to New York, but also coast to coast to California. Join us the day before for our pre-travel day where we stay at the Sofitel Luxury Hotel at Heathrow Terminal 5. We'll then be checking out what Terminal 5 has to offer in regards to departures on our first visit there. Then we're flying British Airways Economy Class on Boeing 777-200 to JFK where we'll be staying in New York City Times Square at the Crown Plaza. When we get to New York, we're gonna be trying some new things like Joe's Pizza, but also some old favorites. So uh, this is basically the pre-travel day. It's all in one, we, we, we're only staying, so we've come really late, it's like nearly 10 o'clock at night. We live in central London, but we wanted somewhere that we can just get up really early in the morning, because we're gonna be getting an eight o'clock Plane. We did get on the Elizabeth line, but we had to change because the Elizabeth line that when we got from Stratford didn't go all the way to Heathrow, but that was no problem. Yeah. Uh, it was about, say, an hour journey or so to get here. Yeah. And then once we got to Terminal 5, it's mostly, it's mostly signposted, so it was quite easy to find the hotel. You go up in some complicated lifts, which Darren found out. Uh, there's lifts that go all the way up, they're automatic, so you can't just get off on one of the floors. You have to go to the top, then you go back down again to the next floor, and then the next floor if you need to. Um, and then we got off on this floor for the hotel. Then you go through a few more corridors, and then I think there was one more hotel. Oh no, there was a, there was actually another lift as well, wasn't there? So yeah, there's a number of lifts. A lot yeah. of them. It are is, is signposted. Yeah, I would say considering we normally go from terminals like two, three, um, and we normally get quite lost there, even though we've been there a number of times. Yeah, uh, this is a lot more straightforward. Um, I mean, we've literally gone through uh, departures and arrivals yeah. on the way in here, yeah. so. Tomorrow is going to be a breeze. We're going to relax a little bit, unwind, and then go and venture out. Maybe whatever's left open, Marks and Spencers awaits. <laughs> and then uh, I had my good deed moment for the day, where uh, we were we got out of the elevator for the hotel on the second floor, and then there was um, a guy who had certain needs, and he, he thought he was trying to help a woman, but she, as we were walking past, she kind of mouthed, help me. So uh, I kind of stopped and uh, kind of tried to direct her to the right direction. She was actually on the wrong floor, so I got her in the elevator away from him, and then uh, he she wanted, off, He yeah. wanted to follow her, and he wanted yeah. to go, yeah. So it was a bit, uh, it was a bit of a strange uh, beginning to the stay, but yeah, uh, yeah it's, um, it is a nice, secure hotel. It does feel safe. It's yeah. just a yeah. very beautiful hotel, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to seeing it in the morning light. Well, four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> We've been upgraded to a King Luxury from a Superior um, and first impressions as we came in, awesome, couldn't work out where the lights was because it's quite late at night now. Um, so yeah, as you come in you put your card in, little slot, illuminated in green and then you've got all your buttons, your on buttons on the right hand side here and straight away you're met with all your coffee and tea needs. Um, it looks like it's an espresso which is what we've got at home. Might be using that tomorrow morning. And you've got your ice buckets, glasses, kettle, perfect. Then directly on the right, this is a nice prize because this is a really nice um, upgrade. We've got both a walk-in rain shower, which I adore, with Balmain Paris uh, products. So I won't need to use any of the ones I brought because they're better than the ones I brought. Toilet, a phone. Who uses a phone anymore? Um, glasses, again, toiletries, and then you've got some little uh, sealed toiletry and some accessories on the side there. Very small basin. Um, we've quite often, we, we, uh, I was half expecting to have two basins because that's not. Are you planning on taking a bath in there or something? <laughs> you know, a little splash here and there. Um, yeah, it's, it's actually a nice size, so someone could be taking a bath if you've got kids. That's perfect uh, for bathing because you've also got all the different options for the. Um, the bath with the shower head, etc. You've got plenty of towels, that's good. And of course, the uh, soft towel dressing gown. Dressing gown. Um, nice big mirror for checking yourself as you leave. And then, yeah, decent size wardrobe, iron board, iron. Another dressing gown, slippers. Got here. Sewing kit. Oh, that's that's quite useful because we need one and sh for shoes and a suit brush as well. Let's go. It's quite nice. 
Uh, I'm guessing this is going to be the fridge. Oh no! Oh yes, fridge and safe. Uh, let's go. So the, I think these are complimentary. Please enjoy refreshments available on the mini bar without compliments. So that's good because I haven't bought any water. I bought some Coke, but I haven't bought any water and a bottle opener. That makes a nice change. Plenty of space to put your bags and luggage. Does this open? All spaces. That's good. Large amount of drawer spaces. This is the king size bed, which is going to be absolute luxury for us. Living in central London, we don't have the luxury of a king size bed. Um, so yeah, this is really impressive. Um, it's got the decent reading lights. I do like the ones at Disney where they like clip out of the wood, but these are the next best thing. Yeah, nice. It feels clean as well. Very, very clean. Very contemporary. Another phone. And uh, why don't you turn, turn down so this? Two bedside tables. A bit rickety. And there's the one on the other side. Uh, what I've heard is described as a cockroach chair, but it's, it's actually quite a classic design. I actually like it, I think yeah, that's cool. I, I'm going to be using that a little bit before bed. We haven't got long before we go to bed, to be honest. Um, and then this is what, what do you think we're going to see out here? I have no idea because um, I don't know where we are in the building. Okay, so we're looking out over the actual foyer. So this is where we came in down here on the other side of the, uh, if you can see the Sofitel symbol there. And there's a shop down there and then there's restaurants and I think there's two really good restaurants. One which is kind of like a grill um, with different types of things. And then there's one which is based on a brasserie kind of vibe with um, classic British and French meals so right that's apparently that's a fancy one um but yeah I don't, we're not going to get to see, try that but we are going to go wandering uh but yeah it's uh, i'm quite impressed and it was quite a what, five minute walk from the terminal yeah it's quite uh, a long i mean it's quite a long um walk down the corridors but you can't get lost that's the one good thing um and it was very busy as well because it's like what half past nine nine nearly ten so we ventured downstairs, um, again about a five minute walk, been to Marks and Spencer's, got some treats, I think you've bought yourself a few bar. Oh, you did get the Rosé Prosecco. I did. <laughs> I'll be just drinking Coke. I've got a cookie uh, uh, brought from home and we've got some snacks, savouries, sweets, whatever. Um, but yeah, it was quite impressive with downstairs. It's got like a, it's, this is the arrival section, um, which is one floor down and you essentially got your boots, your DeVray Smiths, your Marks and Spencers. Marks and Spencers had a huge range of, of offers and they always seem to be stocking until, we're definitely stocking up when we were there. Um, they had a lot of food, yeah. But there's, yeah, boots and DeVray Smiths, standard. Got, you've got basics that you need. Um, and then you've got uh, the train tickets. So if you are arriving into Terminal 5 from a different country, you've got you've like a really well lit and displayed train ticket service. And then just opposite that, there's an information sort of mapping thing. It's literally like a minority report of <laughs> information, um, which is so much more impressive than Terminal 2 and 3. Um, so yeah, uh, up to now, I'm quite impressed. But yeah, we need to have a little bit of a snack and then it's bedtime. Cut to, uh, cut to 7.30 in the morning. Basically, we got up at 5.30 this morning. How was the hotel, Darren, last night? Really nice. I, the, the, it was put, the bed was perfect for me. I love soft pillows where you sink into them really thick and soft um, and the bed was just right for me. I slept solidly for a good four and a half hours. <laughs> so that's, that's good. Uh, what about yourself? Yeah, I slept well. I, I don't like those kind of pillows. I don't like soft pillows, but um, I slept well, so that's the main thing. It took me a, while, it looked a little bit while to get off, but uh, yeah, we got off at midnight, then woke up at 4.30 the next morning. And then uh, how was the shower? How was the... Yeah, the, the actual... Um, the air conditioning was great, so the temperature was really well regulated. Um, all the products were great in the bathroom. I really, yeah, I got, it was 10 out of 10. I found the shower a bit weird to get used to in terms of the temperature, uh, but apart from that, it was very nice. Yeah, I, I just literally switched it on, stepped in, that was it. Um, but yeah, the staff were really great. We're only there for like a few hours when we think about it, so we didn't get to use all the facilities. I'm sure we will again in the future though. It would be a very nice hotel to, to stay in 
for a bit longer as opposed to turning up at uh, nine o'clock at ten o'clock at night and then just uh, quickly taking off and then once we left the uh, hotel room how long did it take to get here Darren? Oh, uh, hardly anything at all the walkway is really clear everything's easy to get through there was a few problems when we came to check in at British Airways there's quite a lot of check-ins like different areas that weren't marked off very British clearly Airways. yeah so just um, to let you know how much we paid for Sofitel for one night it was just under 200 pounds um, we got a tip from the Broadways away, uh, make sure to check, check their vlogs out. Um, they go there quite regularly and they said if you don't check in online beforehand, you've got more chance of being upgraded. And sure enough, considering how late we were, um, yeah, they upgraded us from a stand, like a sort of superior room to a luxury room for a king. Um, so that was great. So try that tip in the future. And then this morning, the walk across was only like five minutes, literally just down in two hallways and then uh, up an elevator and then you were literally at arrivals. Yeah, a few technical difficulties with scanning our boarding passes and lots of queues to actually physically put in the self, um, self baggage. Um, but yeah, it was very straightforward. So in Wagamama's, um, the prices for juices are quite high, seven pounds a juice. Um, but you'll find that they are very demure and very mindful. But yeah, seriously, I've had an uh, Eggs Benedict and Rob's uh, gone for the, what was it, the Japanese omelette? Yeah. What's in the omelette? Um, it's with chicken, prawn and bacon. I was going to go for the full English, but I felt like I really want to try something different. It's, yeah, their take on something, so yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, so I went for the Eggs Benedict, which has a um, steamed harata bun, topped with two steamed eggs, ham and katsu hollandaise, and then uh, coriander and shimmy spice. Yeah, really nice. I don't know if I'd have it again. I'd give it probably three and a half Kenobis. It had nice flavour, very different. The eggs were lovely. Tea stained eggs were actually had lovely yolks, like runny yolk. Very nice, but I would like to try something else in the future if we come back here for a breakfast. Um, yeah, my omelette was nice. Uh, yeah, it had a nice kind of sweet flavour inside with the sauce. Uh, I would definitely recommend it as a, as a breakfast option in the future. Nice little combination with the prawn, the chicken and the bacon. Um, I'd probably give that four shrimps in the body. Oh, nice. So, uh, security was pretty straightforward. However, um, wouldn't be a trip without some little bit of drama. Uh, just after we ate at Wagamama's, um, I realised I didn't have my iPad and I'd left it. I looked, I looked on my Find My, Apple, etc. And yeah, found it at security and a very, very lovely guy um, reassured me that they would find it. And sure enough, it was handed in. He got it straight away. Um, but yeah, so that was a bit of a... Uh, <laughs> my, my heart was racing because we're going to be coming down to the... Um, we're going to be boarding soon, so we were like, oh my god, last thing to do. But yeah, actually the overall experience there was good. What about yeah. the shops? We didn't really do any duty-free shopping. We had a quick look in a few boots. We're trying to find uh, the Boots Revival foot spray as recommended by the Kershaws, but it, because they've seemed to have recommended it, everywhere seems to have sold out. The, the airport doesn't seem to sell it anywhere that we could find. And um, we haven't been able to find it at any boots in London. And I've never seen so many Boots stores and WH Smith stores. Yeah, so we didn't do any duty-free shopping. We just did the way babies had uh, breakfast wagon mamas. And then it was, uh, yeah, looking in the Boots, uh, got some sunscreen. And then over to the departure gate. So to get to the departure gate, well, in the, in the duty-free, it is split into two levels. So there are some restaurants. Uh, most of the restaurants seem to be at the top, top floor as you come out through security. But then you can go downstairs as well, where you need to go to get to the departure gates. To get to our departure gate, we had to take uh, a, uh, a train. Otherwise, it said it was going to be like a 20-minute walk. So we did we did get on the uh, the mini kind of uh, people mover, and that was literally five minutes to get over here. And then you're up two escalators, and then you're in the waiting area. So we are at the departure gate right now. So we are flying British Airways from London to New York. The flight left at 20 past eight in the morning and did leave on time. Yeah, this is my first experience with British Airways. So I'm gonna be quite honest with this whole sort of overview. First up, we had the exit row seats that we pre-booked. We're both quite tall, Rob especially, and with my leg, I, I often need to stretch out. So that was really useful to have that as an option. We got that pretty early though in the booking process. One thing I did find really bizarre with my experience with British Airways was having 
and this is the first time I've ever experienced it on any plane, is to get to your seat and have things like your blanket and your pillow out ready for you and all the, all the gubbins you get as part of the start of the flight. But on this trip, they really went hard on the whole, like having everything up above us. And this wasn't just for us, it was for everybody behind us as well. And I, I found it very strange that they put all this stuff out just for us to put all the gubbins up into the, the storage section. This isn't a strange pose for me either. I'm not trying to give some uh, weird Instagram pose, but I did get a pinched nerve in my shoulder two days before we were due to fly. And this was one of the only ways I could comfortably fly for seven hours is to basically put my arm up in a certain position I also did find that standing up against the uh, emergency exit door, which was cold, quite um, soothing for my shoulder. But I was in a lot of pain for this flight and also for the whole week and a half that we were on holiday. Yeah, he, Paul Rob looked constantly like he was putting his hand up for the teacher. So the, the stewards were actually really great. They kind of um, picked up on the fact that he was you know, holding himself in a very particular way. And they inquired quite early into the flight as to you know, what the issue was or if there's anything wrong. And he just explained and they left him alone for the rest of the trip. But yeah, I, I did feel for him, especially in a cramped space like this. We also did find that the seats felt really small. They felt quite cramped. They felt smaller than other seats we'd sat in. And we, after speaking to a friend, we did discover that these planes, the economy is actually smaller, one of the smallest of this plane size. Yeah, they basically maximized their seating. So they went from having, let's say, like a 333 combination of seats to then having a 343, uh, which means they've got to make space somewhere, which explains why the width of the seats was so small. I was, I was kind of, I was actually shocked. And I did like fret for a bit about how I was going to be comfortable for the rest of the trip because there was literally no room to sort of like shift in. If you're smaller size, then great. I mean, I'm, I'm you know, a bit weightier, but um, I've never had both hips be touching the sides of the seats like hard before like this. The food we got served, obviously we were leaving early in the morning. So the food we got served was breakfast. It was a cooked breakfast. Uh, it was fine. It was okay. It was not a, an amazing meal. It's economy meal. So it's, you know, you know the expectations aren't high. Yeah, it was served hot and efficiently. To add to the small space, we had three seats. We were the two right-hand side seats and there was one person on the aisle to my left. I was in the middle and he was definitely someone who liked to spread out a lot. And he was quite aggressive with it as well. So I spent most of the flight with him with his elbow in my side, which was very weird. And yeah, it made it very difficult to eat. Um, I was literally having to put my knife and fork in my hand and eat straight out in front of me at an angle so to be able to cut things um it, yeah it was the most it was the most restricted access i've had to be able to do anything on a flight ever overall the flights did seem to go quite quickly you slept a bit i didn't get much sleep at all due to my shoulder but i, I did feel the flight went quite quickly it was about six and a half hours seven hours there were definitely i mean there was also good opportunities for in-flight entertainment. I'm not a big fan of the fold-out um, screens that you get in the exit row. I understand why they're there, but they feel like they could update them because they're not to the same standard as the other seat. So I just decided to, as ever, use my iPad as my media. I, I pre-download everything. I have like films, TV shows, whatever. But sometimes, as you'll discover in our future episodes and another travel day, that can't always be relied on. Overall, there was one steward who was on our section and she was very nice. I, I found her... Um... She was naturally chatty and very genuine. She felt very genuine to talk to. Sometimes they don't want to be talking to people. They, they just want to do their job, etc. Yes. And then we landed at JFK. We arrived at about 11 o'clock in the morning, which was really early and it was really good for us. Yeah, it meant that we've got like kind of a f pretty much a full, you know, at least an afternoon and an evening spare within New York. So it meant we had almost like an extra day to our trip, our itinerary. And because we flew British Airways, we did arrive in a different terminal than we did in December last time. And it took us three hours to get through immigration, I believe, last time. This time, it literally took five minutes. There yes. Was, there was, it was five minutes in the line and we were straight through. It's the quickest immigration I've ever been through in terms of going into America. I've done it once before in New York, which was a godsend, So, I, but I never thought it would ever happen again. And it really was. It was like uh, super, super quick. Um, almost it, too good to be true. So I had downloaded an app called the Mobile Passport Control, which is supposed to help you get through immigration quicker when you go to America from the UK. But we didn't actually need it because there was no line and because it was so fast to get through. But it's worth looking into. 
if you are going to America to try and beat those lines, if, especially if you arrive in the afternoon when it is busier. Once we were through, it took about another 10-15 minutes for baggage and that was fairly quick again and then we were off. So we've done this journey before where we get the trains into central New York. So we got the air train. Yeah, the air train is really regular and really easy to catch. To get to the air train, there are signposts. You do have to kind of keep your wits about you, but there are uh, signs everywhere. Yeah, it is a bit of a confusing mess of signposts. And you it's one of those where you tend to find it'll send you one way and then the directions will suddenly vanish and you're expected to somehow guess. Um, but don't be afraid to ask. There's lots of people around who will direct you. And where posts are misleading, there are lots of people there to help you as well find your way. It is an easy service. It is just a tap in with your um, credit card or your debit card. Uh, we used an international one that we had and that worked well enough. And we also used that for the subway, uh, like we do in London, as opposed to buying a Metro card. Yes, yeah, so with the air train, you don't tap in to get onto it, you get onto it as normal, then you tap to get out. Uh, this time we did use our credit cards or you know, our, our, our main sort of international. card, our international card. You can use your credit card, you can use your app, whatever. You, use, you, know, you can use your Apple Pay, whatever. Um, and we did find it much easier this visit than the previous one. It takes about 10 minutes on the train to get from JFK to Jamaica Station, which is the one we got to. And then at Jamaica Station, it is signposted again, and we then took the Long Island Railroad. Yeah, we took the Long Island Railroad service, same as last time. We find it to be, if you're not wanting to spend stupid amounts of money on taxi services, which can add up, you're talking, you know, about $100 to get from JFK to Manhattan, and you're not necessarily going to get there speedily because of traffic. We find this service to be the most efficient. It doesn't necessarily take you to your end point as needed, but there is the subway once you get to say Penn Station or Grand Central Station to get to where you want. Bear in mind if you've got heavy bags, that can slow you down because lift services, etc., are few and far between when you're in the subway. Do be aware that they do charge by off-peak and peak times, and they do differ from the UK, so you will need to find out what times are peak and off-peak when you arrive. Once we got on the train, it was simple enough to get to Penn Station. We then decided to get the subway up to Times Square. Yeah, we used, we used Google Maps to work out where the best sort of exit would be for Times Square because Times Square is big and sprawling. Um, it kind of connects onto Broadway and lots of other areas, so it's quite easy to sort of get the wrong section of Times Square where you can end up walking for quite a long time. And when you've got heavy bags, that's not ideal. We did use Google Maps a lot and it was very handy. But it is one of those apps where once you get out of the station, it doesn't always make it easy to work out which direction you're supposed to go in initially. So if you've ever been to London or any major city in the world where you're using a map service and sometimes it freaks out because it doesn't know whether you're looking up, down, left or right, um, yeah, you've, you've got to be conscious of that. Sometimes you need to walk in a particular direction to work out if you're going in the right direction on the map. We were staying at the Crown Plaza Times Square and once we got our bearings, it was fairly easy to find. Yeah, I mean, it sticks out like a sore thumb. Once you, once you find it, it's like, you, yeah, you can't miss it. Crown Plaza Times Square is literally attached to the Krispy Kremes, which is the kind of main Krispy Kreme store, which is essentially like a fairground for Krispy Kremes. And opposite the M&M store as well. So as you can imagine, it's not difficult to miss. It did take a very long time to check in when we got there in the afternoon. It took about 20 minutes, 25 minutes to get through the line. But once we did, the lady who served me was extremely nice and very helpful. So for this trip, I don't know if we mentioned it previously, but for this trip, we had a travel agent, a friend of ours arranged basically the whole trip. Um, and we didn't really give him too much, you know, sort of restrictions as to where to go. We wouldn't normally stay in Times Square. Uh, due to the fact that when it gets to night time, it does become a very full on area. However, we knew that we were going to be just here for three nights and we just wanted somewhere to sleep and that was it. And that somewhere that was central that we could get from A to B really, really quickly and easily. And Times Square, as, as full on as it can be, um, is very handy for that. This is our first time using like uh, an independent travel agent and we decided to go for Your Great Adventures, uh, with, which is personal travel planning, 
and Lewis, who is a friend of ours, he, he kindly offered to help us organise this coast-to-coast -coast trip. So we'd like to thank him for that because he did a great job. And his wife, Jill, who was often the person who contacted us um, in the build-up to the trip. So we've been upgraded. Second night on the trot, we've been upgraded. So here we are. We're at the Crown Plaza Times Square. Now, everything in our being and our core says don't stay in Times Square. All the guides say don't do it. But we got a really good deal through our travel agent, so we're really happy to be here. It's central, it's got all the stations around us. We're going uptown, downtown, wherever you want. Um, and they gave us an upgrade, so... So show us the hotel room, Dan. Let's. So straight in, it's, it, straight away, you can tell it's an older hotel. It needs some TLC. But it's got a lot of space, which for New York is huge. Um, so you've got your bathroom with directly as you come in. Quite a nice space, and this looks like it's pr relatively newish. All these fittings look newish and clean. Um, yeah, so that's quite nice. We've got a walk-in shower, which can fit probably two or three people, if you wish. Whatever floats your boat. But yeah, that's going to be really nice. It's not a rain uh, shower, but it's, yeah, it looks like it's got like multiple settings as well. So what about toilet? How is that? What conditions are there? What, uh, hey. Standard porcelain in New York. Let's see, try and flush. Mm. Yeah. So there's a hair dryer. Hair dryer bin, plenty of towels, plenty of face towels. And then you're know, kind of into the main thing. You've got a mirror on your left hand side. You've got, also got, I actually thought this was going to be like a utility thing for them, not you know, one of those where it's locked and you don't get access to. But this is actually your wardrobe. Big enough space. You've got the iron and the uh, iron board. You've got the suitcase stands there as well. It's gonna, yeah, we're here for three nights, so. Um, then you've got these oversized bedside tables. This is a king size again, similar to uh, the Sofitel at Heathrow. These feel a bit firmer as well, which is great. Um, and then I think because of the upgrade, I think this might be bigger than what we were originally having, or we might have just had two doubles originally. But we've got king, we've got the desk. One thing we've already, already discovered, which I've never come across before, there's no fridge. So you've got drawer space, drawer space, and uh, safe. You've got a very bog standard coffee thing, but who's, who's gonna want to make coffee here when you can go out and get some of the best coffee in the world? Um, and then you've got your sort of plastic cups and your ice bucket. Drawer spaces again, no fridge. Desk with yeah, it's standard, there's a, land, a really old landline. Standard kind of, uh, here's New York, this is where you're staying, print. A very kind of what would remind me of something from the 90s, early noughties, um, or you go to uh, Matalan or what was the one, TK Maxx, <laughs> and get a lovely table there. But this has got a chaise long, which will be actually quite useful when you've had a long day walking and your dogs are barking. Uh, but, so this is, uh, if you've seen our last series, that was in New York, that was just before Christmas and we stayed in the brand new uh, Virgin Hotel. Uh, this is obviously an old place that's been here for many years, but it's in Times Square, so let's see what the view's like. We haven't had a proper look at this yet. Because we're up higher, I think it was like 39th floor. Okay. So we are literally looking over Main Times Square to our right, so that's heading downtown. So you've got where the ball drops around here for the new year. Um, and you can see pretty far down downtown, H&M building. And then uptown, you've got all the rich pictures and the properties that they can't sell according to the Netflix special. That's that, that's that building that you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, really we've been tall. watching a Netflix show um, selling Manhattan and that is prominent in that, um, where they can't sell certain properties. In fact, most of the properties. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a really good view. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what it's like at night. Um, I'm sure we'll, at, at the end of this vlog, at the end of this travel day vlog, we're going to put in what it looks like at night time. So I think it's going to look like, uh, well, probably going to get blind by the light, to be honest. Um, but yeah, we're going to have a little bit of a rest. And, oh, you can see the ticket steps. The iconic ticket steps. Yeah. Um, so we're going to have a rest. Uh, the plan is to go out downtown later, probably 
and I think maybe we'll try a bit of pizza. So this is dangerous. We're living above the biggest Krispy Kreme. It's like a Charlie in the Chocolate Factory of Krispy Kremes. So we literally just checked in and now we're just going to go looking for some pizza. Joe's Pizza, I believe. Yeah, made famous by Spider-Man, the movie. Is this the actual location? It's one of the locations. I don't know whether it's the location. Not the location. But it's yeah. more downtown. But it's supposed to be good pizza anyway. Yeah, of course we're hungry. So we've done the authentic uh, Joe's Pizza. We've gone for two slices each, but they're quite large slices. We work out about $5.50 each, and then we've got the two imported uh, sodas. Um, they basically are made with real sugar cane. And we liked them last time. So yeah, five dollars each, five dollars fifty each, and the drinks, and it came to thirty dollars including tax. And then we give what, six dollars, uh, six dollars, yes, six dollars tip. Yeah, cool. Let's try it. Folding it like you should. Yeah, that was, that was worth the wait. Yeah. Really light, really crispy. It's not dripping off the pizza. That's a winner for me. Yeah, it's a really creamy pizza. It's really nice, actually. That's yeah. a really, really nice pizza. Very nice pizza, very creamy, uh, very cheesy. Yeah, great, great size of pizza. I mean, you're very picky with your bases, so yeah, good. The white pizza. Yeah, really. Like what Rob was saying, reiterate, exactly the same. Really creamy, light base, not sickly. Um, I'd say for both of these, I'm going to give them 4.5 Kenobis right. out of 5. Yeah. Uh, really enjoyable pizza, fantastic base, great flavours. Really enjoyed the white pizza, so um, I'd definitely give it a four and a half shrimps and a barbie. Uh, great first meal while we're in New York. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, it's a bit of a tourist trap, but it's uh, definitely worth it. Give Might have to try one of the other ones. <laughs> so, because we've arrived on opening weekend of um, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, I've decided, like an idiot, that I'm going to stay up late and go and see a late show at the IMAX in Times Square. So, come with me to the AMC. So you have two choices, both are owned by Cineworld, I believe. You've got Regal, and then you've got AMC. AMC is the one with the IMAX and it's a bit more modern. Um, so I'm gonna go with that one. We've just been to Double Chicken Please. I'm smiling. Um, yeah, so uh, as this is like a, a delayed 50th birthday sort of trip for me, we tried to get into one of our favorite places to drink and eat, which is Double Chicken Please. Some of you may remember it from our last trip, and it is our go-to place we really wanted to go back to. So they open at five o'clock. We did get there for 20 oh, to five. Yeah, 20 to five, a bit late. But um, there was a massive queue, as you'll see in the video now. So uh, we did queue up, queue up. We got to the front and they said it'll be about an hour, hour and a half wait. She took your number, which they already kind of had on record anyway. Yeah. And then we went for a bit of a walk, uh, ended up in Starbucks eventually had a drink and then they text you and then we got in yeah you text you and you have to get back to them in 10 minutes within 10 minutes and be at the restaurant in 10 minutes um so let's explain whereabouts um double chicken please is there's actually a number of different restaurants and um bars around here which you could go to but for me this is number one this is like number one out, this is number one out of anywhere in new york um but also it's in the lower east side so it's actually quite easy to get to probably yeah. about half an hour in total yeah to get from Times Square to here um, and the service is impeccable as ever. So we went through the restaurant at the moment they've, they've got they're having a bit of a makeover so only half of the uh, half of the bar is open the back half which is the nicer half or it was when we were there last time uh, that's where they do all the cocktails so that's where we wanted to go so that was the result we got set at the bar which was really good because we wanted to get set at the bar as well because you get to see them doing the theatrics of making the drinks and speak to the bartenders as well, so that was good. Yeah, the, the interaction you get with the bartenders, um, oh, it's 10 out of 10. They're always so nice. They're always invested in who they're talking to. They'll explain anything and everything. Um, they'll ask you if you've had it before, or anything like it before, and they'll go into great detail about what exactly you are possibly going to order, yep. whether it be food or drinks or, yeah. So we started off, so we both ordered the cold noodle. Cold noodle is, the 10 out of 10, 5 out of 5, 
number one choice if you ever come here, and I hope some of you do, if you ever come here, go for cold noodle. If you're not going to have anything else for the rest of the evening, you get an hour and a half sitting um, when you sort of have a reservation. Yeah, you get told that at the beginning. Yeah. Um, so you so, uh, time. I had that last time. I really enjoyed it, so I had it again. Uh, great little drink. You've got that kind of foam on top that has the, the flavour of the noodles, but you also have the sweet uh, cocktail underneath. In fact, we'll pop the ingredients while we're talking about it because it is a refreshing drink. Um, it's a bit too easy to drink and there's actually elements of it which I would not normally have in food or drink. Cucumber being one of them. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it makes for a really refreshing cocktail. And we also ordered the popcorn chicken, which we didn't have last time. No. We saw other people having it last time and we definitely wanted to try it. We were going to order two. He recommended just go for one and then order a second one if we wanted. I think that's a sign of a really good place where yeah. they could have made extra sales and had two you know, two portions rather than one. And he actually advised us to just have one. Yeah, and the, the chicken was amazing, really well breaded. Uh, the breading on it was fantastic. Very soft chicken, uh, it tasted great. And then it was a little salty, but it tasted great. And then it also we also ordered the sauce with it as well. So it was the salted caramel egg yolks. Oh, sorry, egg. salted egg yolk uh, sauce. Yeah, that was pretty beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Yeah, um, it's really cool packaging as well that it comes with. Uh, kind of evokes kind of KF, well, Kentucky Fried Chicken, does it? Kind of. Yeah. Elevate, completely elevated. Oh, completely elevated. Yeah. And the sauce was really nice. Yeah. It was like uh, like a Thai peanut sauce. Um, yeah. Yeah, the, 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 it had a little bit of kick to it, a little bit of a spice. Yeah, the more but it was ate. a fantastic sauce. I really enjoyed it having both of them together. I probably could have done with ordering another one actually, two, having two two of the sauces. But we'd already eyed something up on the menu, and um, the the uh, yeah he he the mixologist he basically was like saying it's his favourite dessert on the menu, Le Big Mac, and I've never had anything like it in my life. Um, he did explain to us it was quite small, so we ordered one each. Uh, comes in a packaging with here's, the Big Mac on. Here's the ingredients right now. Um, just amazing. Just like unlike anything I've ever had before. And the presentation was gold star. Just yeah, it looks like a little burger, but what it is, <laughs> what it is, is a macaron with ice cream filling inside, but different layers of ice uh, cream, like kind of with yeah, different, different flavors. And weirdly, like some are like a sorbet and some are crunchy and yeah it, it's amazing and what we also had a second drink a second cocktail what yeah you i had the beetroot one that did, did taste like a beetroot so that was very nice still not uh i would still say the cold noodles my favorite oh yeah um i would agree with rob on that it was nice but it wouldn't be one necessarily i'd go for again came with like a creamy mascarpone on top yeah so that kind of added to the flavor but again i, I you know i still prefer the cold noodle i like my whiskies rob is not a fan of whiskies, um, but I definitely wanted to try the red eye gravy, which was heavily whiskey based. And it's kind of, again, one of these where it's like you're playing with your drink and your food. Yes, yeah, so the red eye gravy comes with like a dried sort of, almost like a maple, bake, like a bacon flat. And essentially you try the drink, you take, sip the drink, you take a bite you, and you just repeat. And the saltiness with the whiskey just, awesome but it is a heavy drink it does feel you feel it more than the cold noodle it is the one that if you had more than one i think you would be like stumbling off the, the bar for, rather than just like gracefully uh, and, and demurely uh, leaving the, the establishment but yeah 10 out of 10 five five kenobis i feel like time. our little kind of place is getting a lot louder all of a sudden so uh just to wrap it up really enjoyed uh double chicken please loved it again uh, we we'll definitely come back again. Yeah, definitely. Feel like it's our little place. Yeah, it's nice. It's it's intimate. In New York, um, but also we're now going to head back to the towards Times Square where the hotel is. I'm crazy to Times Square. Yeah, I'm going to head around a few bits of like some shops I want to look in, and then I'm going to be going to the AMC to watch Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, which I'm really looking forward to. I'm probably going to go back to the hotel room and take it easy because it's been a long day for me. It's been nearly 20 hours that we've been up at this point. <laughs> To finish the video, we'll show you a time lapse of Times Square from our room. Yeah, because being in Times Square and above Times Square was a very different experience to being just down the road from it. It definitely has that feeling of being the center of it all. We hope you've enjoyed this travel day and we have a lot to come in this series. So we have two more days in New York where we'll be visiting the Statue of Liberty, among other things. Then it's off to the West Coast, to California. It's my first visit, so I'm going to be really excited to have you coming along with me especially as it's going to be my first ever visit in my 50 years being on the earth of going to Disneyland, the OG. Let us know if you've flown British Airways to New York and what you thought of the flight. And then please don't forget to like and subscribe. 
Yeah, please leave your comments down below. We're always interested to hear from you and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.